Nordine right here in front of us. A Nordine what? <laughs> A Newton. A Nordine. Newton. Anyway. We were here. Somebody was here yesterday afternoon late. It was low on charge. And added some refrigerant to it. And I'm here to check the charge and possibly do a leak search. see if it's actually low on charge or it's holding I don't know how empty it was I think they said the pressures yesterday were based on the notes and the call we put the notes at seventy five over two twenty yesterday Two thirty-nine today. Let's check the superheat and subcooling. I don't know if we have a piston inside or a TXV. Superheat and a 1.1 subcool, so it's low. It's about 73 inside, 81 outside. So I'd expect a little bit higher head pressure on it. 73 inside, so it's not hot, hot in there, but. Definitely low, so I'm back to do the leak search on it and see if we can find something. Alright, so the first place I want to start is going to be out here in the outdoor unit. I peeked around in here. I haven't gone under the house yet. You can see that line right there. It's got a lot of, it's kind of halfway dry, a lot of oil residue on that pressure switch wire and kind of down there around that pipe. Right there. So we'll check around under here first. And then maybe we'll hit the coil. See what this comes up with. always kind of know where the oil is spraying from but make sure it's not the bottom of this muffler down here cracks in the pipe, copper pipe before.
head on that pressure switch is cracked. I'm just wondering if it over time it's just been bleeding when the when the thing's running and the discharge pressures on this thing are real high. There's a crack right in the side of this thing. Let's get the H10 and see what happens. And oh by the way, yes, I did also check the evaporator coil and I haven't found anything. Speeding up. Well, okay. So I think it's going to be this pressure switch. Let that thing zero to some fresh air real quick. And I'm going off again after I sniffed. If you look right in the side of that pressure switch right there there's a crack right there going back this way I think, I think we're gonna need to replace this pressure switch and probably put a new valve core in there uh, hopefully there's one in there I don't know but uh, we did take one off of a train unit one time that was supposed to have a valve core in it and uh, it did not so I don't know if one's in there or not. But with all this oil around this switch, there we go. See it speeding up? Yeah. So that's where our leak is. So, this is an old unit. I mean, not old, old. It's 410A. But it's about 15 years old or so. At least. There we go. So. Pretty sure that's where our leak is based on all the, all the oil that's on this pipe right there around my, you see it on my finger right there. That pressure switch is cracked. We got the dried oil over here on the wire. Not in there, so we're gonna need to quit replacing that pressure switch to fix the leak in it. And I'm not sure how you do the serial numbers on these things, what the age is on a Nordine. I have to call them and find out. It's got 410A in it, but it's, I'm assuming it's going to be when they finished off this addition to the back side of the garage. she will hopefully be able to tell me what year that was done, but it ain't going to be under warranty. But anyway, so H10 versus field piece. That field piece works if you've got a big prevalent leak. If you're trying to pinpoint something small, this H10 is really your, your best bet. So anyway, guys. That's another leak search. Cracked pressure switch, fittings leaking, and uh, it's on the high side. So when it's running, that discharge pressure is hot and it's high, and it's probably leaking more when it's running than it is when it's sitting still. So, all right, guys, have a good one.